you're doing uh, on a Beacon stage discussion with Scorsese. What are you most looking forward to talking about there? I, I don't know, actually. I, 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 I'll look at the nine films and the scenes that have been put up, and I'll, I'll try and um, come up with some questions. Or th Ideally, it'd be questions that, I don't know if I can do this, questions that I think the audience would be curious to know about and that are more personal between us and something that we've done, the way we worked on something. I, I, I don't know. I, I've got to see what, the, what, they, what material is there first. So hopefully I'll come up with something interesting. I'm sure you will. The festival, which is so New York focused, opens with the Apollo Theater documentary. Do you have any great memories of the Apollo? Uh, yeah, over the years, uh, some stuff that we did, I, I think, did we not do, or, or um, there was things I went to, maybe with the Apollo was yeah. an institution, and very great, I can't, I can't even remember a thing, but there were a few uh, over the years. What's the, what's the vibe of the festival this year? It seems like it's really hit its stride to me. Uh, I feel like we have so much music at the festival, uh, so that's really exciting. Uh, whether you have uh, the music of the Apollo at the Apollo, or Danny Boyle's film, which uh, closes the festival, which is about a musician who feels he's the only person who can hear, the only one who remembers the Beatles, or uh, Trey Atanasio, or the Wu-Tang Clan, or Linda Ronstadt film with uh, um, Sheryl Crow performing afterwards, uh, or uh, a young man uh, from Malawi, Lazarus, in a short documentary that uh, Madonna produced. Uh, there's a, a lot of great music. There's also uh, the other record store, um, the story of other music, and you know that's the little part of New York that's missing right now. But just the music that came out of the indie music scene in uh, the '90s and the two th early 2000s. A great differentiator. Yeah. We're also doing a day. I know it's not announced yet, so I'll hold it. But you're doing a day on Stonewall, and uh, we're going to bring all my LGBTQ plus lawyers to that. I bought 50 tickets because that's so exciting that you're doing that. Bob, do you have any memories of the Stonewall event and how you reacted at the time, or what you think about it now? The uprising at the at the Stonewall Bar. The AIDS. Uh, well, when was it? I don't know. Not, uh, it's, yeah, it was like in. Fist, it's it's the fiftieth anniversary. But it's the fiftieth anniversary of. Right, the uprising. Uprising. Well, Jane, so, why did you do that? Why did you decide to do that? Why did you decide to focus on that? Look, you realize what's going on in the LGBTQ communities and rights that are being um, taken away. Um, it is uh, just doesn't feel like it's our country to do that, uh, and um, not having not having the same rights. Uh, we have a film from the San Francisco Gay Men's Choir, which uh, they go into all of these uh, red states and seeing and who will accept them and who won't and it's a very uh, emotional emotional film but clearly when we look at uh, what's going on with both women's rights and uh, LGBTQ it's um, not our America when was this? It's no, I'm sorry, I don't know. It's, it's 50, 50 years, years ago. ago. It was the where was it? Where did it happen? It was at the Stonewall Inn in the village. village. And li my great uncle was there. Unbelievable. What, what street is it on? It's right off of Gran right off of Greenwich. Um, sorry, I mean, I right off of so right off yeah. of Eighth. Um, you know that little park. That yeah, it's right that, across you know, that, that little park, park. Yes. Which yeah. they now call Stonewall uh, Park. Okay. Uh, and, so. and what happened was it was the first time. What used to happen is they used to raid these gay bars. Yes. The next day, they would publish their names in the New York uh -huh, Times, uh -huh, and they'd uh -huh, all get okay, fired. Okay. Now you can't do that. that. It's against the law. Yeah. And this yeah. was the first time the gay community fought back, fought the cops, yeah. and it was really the, the founding yeah. of the gay right. rights. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. a 50th anniversary. You were too young to remember. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but we have a, mu a movie or, or something? A full day. A full, day. A, a full day. A full okay. day. Of, it's I called Pride. Yeah, yeah, we have a full day. Of, it's called Tribeca Pride. So when it's not announced, they don't even tell you. Yes. It's yes. A secret. See, I yeah. Even... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good, uh, good stuff. 18th year. How do you keep it fresh? 
Well, she does. Here, yes, <laughs> now, right, now we have amazing, we have extraordinary programmers, and everybody. It's it, we're constantly curious how how the technology is changing, how we tell stories. Our immersive, our immersive arcade is uh, really. Um, you know, it's like going to a great armory show. It's uh, the work is extraordinary. Um, artists and creators in in that space uh, wait to premiere their work here at Tribeca. Um, we're always curious, and that's what and Bob's always curious about new things. So that's what the festival is. What are you curious about this year? Well, uh, <laughs> I don't want to get. Politic, uh, political, but I guess I have to. I, I'm curious uh, to see what's going to happen with this whole Mueller report, mm -hmm. and um, where whether it's going to be a standoff with Congress or it's going to happen, because uh, it's uh, it's appalling what's going on, and I think it sort of permeates everything, even your personal life. I know it does mine in some ways. I mean, I'm not obsessed with it. But you can't help but feel that when you look at the television and you feel like the people representing you and your president is there, to at least you know you got that up there working in some way honorably for you, then that's not happening and there's dishonesty and lying and cheating all over the place. It, it, and now we got this problem with the Mueller report not coming out or not coming out the way it should and what they did with Ken Starr and all 17 boxes of all kinds of nonsense about something. Uh, with Clinton and, and, and with the Republicans, that, that's, that's okay, but this isn't, this is insane. So it, may, it, 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 it makes you angry. Yeah. Doesn't it make you angry? Then it affects other things in your life, in your daily life, because you know you can't even trust them to do the right thing. You, you know, I mean, the Congress, they will do the right thing, but you can't, the, this president is a disgrace, and we all know that now. What about our mayor? How do you feel about our mayor? I, I, I'm not thinking much, you tell me, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, 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 I'm so focused on the, uh, the, the presidency and what's going on. I think our mayor should be focused on issues with NYCHA and what's going on right here in New York City and stop trying to uh, go visit other states and focus on what he, the work he's got to do right here in the city. And um, I think uh, he's a great guy, but he really needs to focus on his current job and start uh, and stop uh, campaigning for something else. Well, I am aware of that. So. Yeah, he's running for uh, he's running for president. Look, who? who? I, 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 Blasio. Blasio. I didn't even know that. Yeah. When did this happen? Did he officially well, announce? <laughs> well, no, nobody knows it. He goes to New Hampshire, and three people show up. Oh, I know. I didn't know that. Yeah. Look, Bob, I don't think you're obsessed with the presidency or the way you speak out about it. I saw the same passion when you founded this festival 18 years ago. You have great passion to do the right thing, to do what you believe in. So I think uh, you're certainly free in America to say what you want and uh, to say what you believe in. I don't think that's an obsession. I think that's your duty and right as an American. So, you know, do yeah. what you think is right. Well, we hope that we see this this country get going in, a, in, a, in a, the right direction and we're not there now it's just it's it's the emperor's new clothes right before us and the fool is this fool is there doing this stuff and he's getting over on, on a lot of people and it has to stop it has to stop anybody you think you could stop him from the democratic party well i this uh the younger guys are good uh, i think in some ways um it's hard because there's you know even Bloomberg I, I like he's a he's a, he's a grown up. Um, uh, I, I like them all. They all have good things to say. This uh, you know the obvious one is Beto O'Rourke. Then there's Bidajed, G, I can yeah. pronounce his name. He's very smart, articulate. He's great. Maybe you know not this time, the next time. But you, you know, I'm I'm you know we, we've got to get somebody to go and face this guy and. Go at him and put him in his place, because that's all he is, is a punk. Put him in his place, put him down, be smart about it. And, you know, with uh, Reagan, he said one thing to Carter, who was a wonderful president and a well-meaning good person. 
um, he said, there you go again in the debate. And that little, there you, that apparently made a whole impression. Yeah. There you go again. Somebody, they, with McCarthy, uh, a guy, Walsh or Walsh, the, the lawyer said, have you no decency? There, you need that with this president. This, I don't even want to call him a president. This, he's, he's a lowlife. You've got to have somebody stand up to him, do these things, tell him, put him in his place, and embarrass him to the world, because he's a name-calling fool. He's a bully of the lowest kind, the lowest kind. All right, George, we're out of time. Thank you very cool. much. Cool. Thanks, guys. And so happy to be back here. Thank you. And